What's going on, everybody? It's Monday. Time for Swift News. Got a pretty light show for you this week. And I think that's for two reasons. Uh, one, it was the last week of the year, so everybody's kind of on holiday break, you know, the new year, all that stuff. But two, I've been working on like severely limiting my my screen time. I've, I've made no secret about it that I was like a Twitter addict. Well, part of the good thing about being a Twitter addict was I was able to find so much cool stuff for this show. But as I'm like reducing my screen time, I'm sure there's a bunch of cool stuff being put out on Twitter that I'm missing. So I wanna try something and ask for your help. So if you see a cool article or something cool in AR Kit or an LOL of the week, or maybe you even wrote an article or created a video, a podcast episode, tweet it out with the hashtag Swift News. And I'll check that hashtag each week to hopefully find some articles that I, I missed throughout the week. And I'm not sure if that's gonna be helpful, but we're gonna give it a try and see how it goes. And a quick reminder, and I'm probably gonna have to say this every episode, is that all the links to everything I talk about are in the Swift News GitHub repo that I created a few weeks back. I didn't mention that in the last episode, and I got a bunch of comments saying, hey, where are the links, where are the links? Uh, I explained it all a few episodes back, so I won't dive into it now, but basically like YouTube reasons why I had to create that repo. So as a reminder, all the links are there. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's get into the show. First up, we have a new open source Swift UI project from Thomas Ricard. Uh, he's done a few of these now. I think he did a movie database one back when Swift UI first came out. He did an open source uh, Reddit client you know, for Mac OS. And now he's got a Rick and Morty, very simple Swift UI app. But this time he's kind of demonstrating, you know, using GraphQL in Swift UI. Now I wanted to share this for two reasons. One, Thomas always puts out good work. In fact, some of these projects have been featured in like WWDC videos, so good stuff there. But uh, I wanna focus on this line that he mentions, right? The app uh, have a very simple Swift UI MVVM architecture. So, okay, so there's two audiences I think will, will like this, is if you're just getting started with Swift UI and you wanna kind of download an app and play with it and see it, because this app is very, very simple, like he says, I think that'd be a good way to, to get started. Um, however, maybe you're advanced in Swift UI, so maybe the UI and architecture is not gonna be a big deal to you, but again, maybe you wanna explore GraphQL in Swift UI. So overall, it's great that Thomas puts out uh, these open source projects for people to play around with. So if you're interested in those two things, uh, here you go. And sticking with Swift UI, we have an article from John Sandel here, The Lifecycle and Semantics of a Swift UI View. And I recommend reading this article just to just really nail down those fundamentals of Swift UI, right? Because you know, when you're learning something, it's a brand new thing, just doing one tutorial, one blog post, one article, whatever, like you're not gonna learn it. You gotta like repetition, right? And you know, if you follow my content, you know I'm all about that. But I like how John uh, explains this because he explains it, you know, from the perspective of like somebody coming from UI kit to Swift UI. So he does a lot of UI kit comparison, which I think is the boat most of us are in. So this article talks about how like views in Swift UI are primarily declared as value types and not like reference types. Like, you know, UI view is a class, UI button is a subclass class of UI view, right? You got reference types, all those inheritance, all that good stuff. Um, then he goes on to talk about the role of the body and how the body in a Swift UI view is very, very important, how that gets triggered when your view gets, you know, recalculated, all that stuff. And then down here in like the dangers of, a, or I'm sorry, the initializer problem, talks about how, well, I'll go down to the line here that really sums it up here, all right? So just because the Swift UI view is created doesn't mean that it will be uh, rendered or otherwise used. So that's like that initializer problem is how if you do stuff in the initializer, like your view may not get used on screen, but it'll still get created. So you gotta be careful using initializers and he goes into the detail here uh, in that article. But again, uh, if you really wanna dive into the Swift UI view semantics and, and really nail those fundamentals, check this article out. Up next, I wanna share a section of Antoine Vanderlee's website all about core data. Now I get asked about core data all the time and the honest truth is I don't have a ton of experience with it. All the projects I've worked on have had like a dedicated backend developer with a custom backend. Everything's just been on the server. I've never really had to deal with core data. So the truth is, I don't know. So I wanna forward everybody on to Antoine Vanderlee's section here. Uh, he's got a bunch of different articles all about core data, as you can see. And then the cool thing, similar to what we talked about with Thomas Ricard's stuff, is he has a core data best practices project that you can download check out and you can see some of the topics here, right? You know, fetch results controller and as fetch request, difficult data source, right? All, all the, the topics there. So again, you can read some of the articles here and then check out the project. Now, I don't know if I would recommend this if like 
you're just, you never touched core data. Maybe you do some of those core data for beginners and getting started with core data type tutorials. And then once you have like the very, very basics under your belt, then I think you can dive into these articles and just further your, your learning. And finally, I wanted to finish up with a fun one here by Sarah Rachmia, how to create the snake game in Swift UI. So as you can see here, just basic snakes Swift UI, fun little game. We've all, maybe I'm dating myself. Maybe we all haven't played that, right? I'm thinking like the Nokia phones from like the early 2000s that everybody just played snake on. But as we get older, maybe not everybody grew up with those Nokia phones. Anyway, uh, if you wanna build the classic snake game uh, in Swift UI on your phone here, I'll go down to the animated GIF uh, that shows it in action. Here you go. Again, super simple, nothing crazy, but if you're just learning Swift UI, you want to have a little bit of fun, here you go. Check it out. Build yourself some snake. All right, that wraps it up for this. Again, very light episode. Uh, but again, if you find uh, any articles, AR kit, LOL, cool stuff in the future, tweet it out or retweet it with the hashtag Swift News, and I'll check that hashtag each week to maybe include those articles. All right, we'll catch you in the next episode.